Welcome back to Diana in the Pink. In this video, I'm going to be talking about common second trimester symptoms and how to help with them. Because the first trimester, you are struggling with morning sickness and you're feeling tired all the time. And in the third trimester, your tummy is very big and making it difficult to get around. But in the second trimester, most women feel the very, very best. But there are some common symptoms that we still experience. So we're gonna talk about that right now. By the way, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. Welcome to In the Pink. And if you're new here, In the Pink means in good health and spirit. So if you like being healthy and happy, make sure to click the subscribe button because you're in the right place. Now, before we jump into this video, I'd really love to hear from you. What brought you here? Are you pregnant right now? Are you just thinking about getting pregnant? Are you in the first trimester, the second trimester? I love to hear from you and where you're coming from. So make sure to put that in the comment section down below. Now, as I was preparing for this video, my list of common second trimester symptoms got longer and longer until I got to the point where I decided, you know what, this is gonna be too long to talk about everything in one video. So this is actually gonna be part one of two videos. And in the second video, we are gonna be talking about leg swelling, leg cramps, back pain, and so many other good things. So make sure to watch for that video coming up next week. But for now, let's jump into the video. Let's start with number one, which is skin changes. So when you're pregnant, you have a huge surge in the hormones, estrogen, progesterone. And while we aren't completely sure about the mechanism, it's thought that these hormones may signal an increase of melanocyte stimulating hormones. And these melanocytes are responsible for skin pigmentation. And the result is that you can see a lot of skin darkening, particularly darkening of the skin around the nipple called the areola, a darkening of the belly button. And then some women also develop a darker pigmented line that, that goes up the middle of the abdomen. We call this the linea nigra. These darker pigmentations will result within a few months after you deliver. However, the increase in these pregnancy hormones can promote the appearance of darker patches or spots on your skin called melasma. Some people refer to this as the pregnancy mask. Melasma looks like a bigger version of a freckle and it can appear on your cheeks, on your forehead, on your jaw and on your neckline as well as your upper arms. It's very common occurring in about 75% of pregnant women. While melasma can sometimes gradually fade within about 12 months from when the baby is born, for some, it doesn't completely fade. Now, considering it can be a permanent skin change, prevention is the best thing you can do. So wear long sleeves, wear a wide brimmed hat when you're outside, and always, always wear sunscreen every single day and reapply it if you're gonna be in the sun for a long period of time. Now, if you do have melasma that hasn't faded, you can talk to your dermatologist about topical skin lightening agents, or you can try a prescription called tranexamic acid, or you could get laser or light therapy, or you can get chemical pills. Number two, swollen breasts. Now the, the surge of hormones from pregnancy can also cause your breasts to become swollen and tender, not just during the second trimester, but throughout the whole pregnancy. You might notice some veins become more visible due to this engorgement. So to alleviate the pain, you can try applying hot or cold compresses about 10 minutes at a time, maybe two or three times a day. This helps for some women. And also, I always recommend that you pick up a good supportive maternity bra. Maternity bras are designed specifically to support your breasts as they're becoming larger and they're more sensitive. So it's worth the investment. Number three, lower pelvic pain called round ligament pain. So as your uterus grows, the supporting ligaments called the round ligaments become stretched and that can cause pain. It's often more common on the right side and it's often brought on by vigorous activity or walking or even just quickly rolling over in bed. And it's often relieved just by changing position. But if you do have any abdominal pain, even if you think it's just round ligament pain, make sure to discuss that with your OB. Number four, Braxton Hicks contractions. Now Braxton Hicks are sometimes called practice contractions and they don't mean that you're going into labor. Braxton Hicks are when your uterus tightens for a minute or two and then relaxes. They can come and go during the latter half of your second trimester and they can continue through your third trimester. They're irregular and they get better with rest. Now, if you wanna know the difference between Braxton Hicks and real labor contractions, I made a video talking all about that and I'm gonna to link to that right here, but know this. Braxton Hicks contractions don't become more intense or regular over time. They get better with hydration and with rest. Now, if you're not sure if the tightening you're experiencing is Braxton Hicks or labor, make sure to always call your OB. Number five, excessively peeing. Now, I've talked a lot about this in my week by week pregnant series, but I'm gonna talk about it again now because it's so common and that is increased 
ping. By the way, if you are new to my channel, I made an entire pregnancy series week by week. I'll put a card above here and at the end of this video, so be sure to check that out. Back to pee. This is a very common issue at this point of your pregnancy. As your baby grows, your uterus will start to compress against your bladder and this will decrease its capacity, which manifests itself in increased visits to the bathroom. Plus, pregnancy itself is a state where your body produces about 50% more fluid and blood and the excessive fluids are gonna be filtered through your kidney and become urine. So peeing excessively during the day and then having to get up in the middle of the night to pee, totally normal. What isn't normal though is if you have pain with urination. Burning when you pee can be a symptom of a urinary tract infection or UTI. Back pain, fever, and body aches along with burning could mean that the infection has moved up to your kidneys. So be sure to tell your OB if you have any of those symptoms. But as far as how to help with increased urination, there isn't really much of anything that you can do about peeing a lot except continue to drink water. I know it's tempting to want to drink less so that you pee less, but don't do that though. You really want to make sure that you stay hydrated. So keep drinking plenty of water and know that your overly frequent bathroom trips will go back to normal after the baby comes. Number six, heartburn. Super common during pregnancy because the pregnancy hormones can relax the smooth muscle at the bottom of your esophagus, which is your throat, and this allows stomach acids to be able to flow back into your esophagus, which causes heartburn. Also, your enlarging uterus puts pressure on your stomach, forcing acids up into your esophagus as well. So you can try to manage heartburn by eating more frequent and small meals, try to avoid spicy foods and fatty foods, and then try not to eat right before you lay down, and also avoid wearing tight clothing. Sugar-free gum might help with heartburn symptoms. Sometimes just a glass of milk can help. There are over-the-counter antacids that you can use, but talk to your OB about which ones they want you to take. Number seven, constipation. Now this is a very common issue for many pregnant women. The increase of progesterone during pregnancy actually increases your bowel transit time. In other words, digested food stays inside for a longer amount of time in your bowels. And to make matters worse, the iron in your prenatal vitamin also can cause constipation. So you'll wanna make sure to drink plenty of water, walk frequently, and then get plenty of fiber in your diet. Or you can talk to your OB about starting a stool softener if fiber doesn't keep you regular. Avoid sitting on the toilet straining to have a bowel movement as this can cause hemorrhoids, which is number eight. Hemorrhoids are more common in the third trimester, but I'm gonna go ahead and briefly talk about them now because if you can prevent them, you'll be all the better off. So hemorrhoids are blood vessels around the anus that become swollen due to increased pressure from your enlarging uterus. And to make matters worse, if you're straining to have a bowel movement because you're constipated, that can cause a hemorrhoid or make your hemorrhoid worse. So this is why it's important to try to keep your poop soft and avoid straining. Hemorrhoids can cause itching and burning and also bleeding in the anus where your poop comes out. Over-the-counter hemorrhoid pads with witch hazel like Tux or hemorrhoid creams that have hydrocortisone are both considered safe during pregnancy or talk to your OB about prescription strength hemorrhoid treatments. Just as a disclaimer, this video isn't intended to diagnose or treat you. It's only meant to be educational. So if you have any symptoms that you are at all concerned about, be sure to get it checked out by your own OB. And hey, if you did find this video informative, it would mean the world to me if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Diana in the Pink. And like I mentioned earlier, I made an entire pregnancy series going through every week of pregnancy, starting at week four. And each week I talk about baby development. I go more in depth about symptoms that you might be experiencing how to help with them, what to expect at your next OB appointment, pretty much everything that you need to know about pregnancy that week, I talk about in that video. So I'm gonna link to that video series right here. Click on that and I will see you over there.